Welcome to lecture 8 of module 3. This is lecture number 29 of the course. In this lecture, we will see how quantum noise, quantum Langevin noise in particular, affects the optical mode of a febripero cavity and this will lead us to the very famous input-output relation and this relation is going to be extremely useful for our discussion on quantum cavity optomechanics. So let us begin. In the last class we started discussing the quantum counterpart of the classical Langevin noise. In this regard we have assumed the bath to be a collection of an independent quantum harmonic oscillator at some finite temperature T. As we have to calculate the expectation value of various operators, we needed to know the appropriate density operator. As uh, we know that the expectation value of any operator A is given by trace of rho into the operator. So we first wrote down the density operator in the so-called number state basis where this guy pn is the probability and we calculated the average phonon number after that we worked out the position position correlation function for an ensemble of n harmonic oscillator and first we started by calculating the expectation value of product of two position operators for i -th and the z oscillator we have expressed the position coordinate in terms of the quantum annihilation and creation operators and thereby we have uh, arrived at the expression for the expectation value of qy and qz and finally summing it over the all oscillators we got the expression uh, and we express it in the in this particular form here then we wrote down the quantum mechanical Hamiltonian for the Bath oscillator system. Here the Hamiltonian uh, has exactly the same form as that of the classical one. Only thing is that this uh, variable position and the momentum variable are now operators and they has to satisfy the commutation relation as defined uh, in this equation. So using heisenberg equation of motion we can get an equation analogous to the classical langevin equation where this uh, classical langevin noise is now represented by this operator and it has also exactly the same form uh, in the limit when the bath oscillator coupling is assumed to be weak we find that this is, is very easy to see that this Langevin noise operator, quantum Langevin noise operator is Hermitian and because of the fact that these are quantum operators so xi of t xi of 0 is not equal to xi of 0 xi of t that means the order time order also uh, this depends we calculated the expectation value of this uh, product of this uh, quantum Langevin noise which is uh, is the autocorrelator and calculating it uh, we got this particular expression which further can be expressed in a little bit simpler form defining the as usual the bat uh, spectral density using bat spectral density we have written down the uh, autocorrelation function autocorrelator uh, here and in considering the omic damping we got the expression for the autocorrelation for the Langevin noise which is also known as the second moment of the Langevin noise and as usual in the classical limit it gives it should give the uh, classical expression which we obtain we see uh, that this uh, autocorrelator depends only on the time difference uh, 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 so defining a parameter tau which is the time difference of this uh, which basically denotes the time difference so using this parameter tau we write down the autocorrelation function in this particular form after that we calculated the quantum spectral noise density and to do that we just have to uh, 
work out the Fourier transform of the correlator and doing that we get the expression for the spectral quantum spectral noise density for omega greater than zero and we have worked it out for omega less than zero also so we worked out the quantum spectral noise density at plus omega and at minus omega and it turns out that this function is not uh, symmetric which is the, which is unlike uh, the classical case in the classical case we saw that this noise den spectral noise density is a symmetric function in the classical limit obviously again we obtain the class uh, the classical expression uh, for the spect uh, spectral noise density finally we started discussing the quantum noise effect on an optical mode in the context of a fabry perot cavity because the fabry perot cavity is at the backbone of any cavity optomechanical system here we considered uh, one of the mirror in the fabry perot cavity to be perfectly reflecting and the other mirror to be partially transmittive and vacuum fluctuation enters into the cavity uh, from one side and if it is a cavity optomechanical system then it is usually always drive by a single mode laser having frequency omega l we wrote down the quantum mechanical hamiltonian for the system and but here the first term refers to the energy of the cavity mode the second term describes the energy of the but oscillator modeled as a collection of independent electromagnetic oscillators with the constraint that this commutation relation has to be obeyed that is the commutation between say bi bz dagger should be equal to delta ij and the third term describe the uh, laser driving the cavity externally the fourth and the final term this is the final term it refers to the system but coupling the strength of the coupling between the cavity mode and the bath operator is given by the parameter omega i. This Hamiltonian is the basis of our analysis for the rest of this lecture. Now let us go over to the continuum limit because ultimately the these bath oscillators are infinite in numbers. So when we go over to the continuum limit, this summation sign is going to be replaced by integral. Uh, in fact, uh, this uh, summation is over uh, the discrete index i and it turns into an integration over the bath oscillator frequency omega and it has to be dimensionless so it is uh, divided by say delta omega here delta omega is the mode spacing and we take it in the limit say delta omega tends to zero and the bath operators undergoes uh, this kind of transformation so i will explain that so we have say bi the discrete uh, uh, variable now in the continuum limit it would become delta omega half delta omega to the power half b of omega and b i dagger in the discrete space it is going to be delta omega to the power half uh, b dagger of omega in the continuum also please note that in continuum we have this relation uh, delta omega minus omega dash d omega that is equal to one on the other hand you know that in the discrete space we have this Kronecker delta now in the continuum it would be replaced by delta omega minus omega dash delta omega so therefore this commutation relation in the discrete space bi bj dagger is equal to delta ij in the continuum limit it would uh, be replaced by b of omega b uh, dagger of omega dash is equal to delta omega minus omega dash 
so these are very important relations so utilizing all this now we can uh, rewrite this uh, hamiltonian this hamiltonian is in the discrete space now in the continuous space this hamiltonian can be written as follows so we will write this hamiltonian as h cross omega 0 a dagger a so both oscillators are now going from the discrete to the continuum so we have now integration d omega h cross omega let me just show you so this summation is now replaced by integral so d omega h cross omega b dagger omega uh, b of omega and this uh, external laser drive would remain same because it just involve uh, the optical mode only it does not involve the uh, bath oscillator so it will remain as it is so you will have a dagger e to the power minus i omega lt minus omega drive the complex conjugate a e to the power i omega lt and finally the bath and uh, the mode coupling that would be again this bath oscillators are involved so it would be replaced by integral uh, h cross integration d omega omega star omega a b dagger omega plus omega this capital omega omega and we have a dagger b of omega so this is going to be the key hamiltonian now and we can immediately write couple of things from here first of all we can calculate the heisenberg equation of motion for the mode operator so that would be a dot is equal to time derivative of the mode operator would be 1 by i h cross the commutation between a and h so you can already we have done this kind of stuff too many times in the course so immediately you can write it would be minus i omega 0 a plus omega drive uh, e to the power minus i omega lt you can verify it because commutation with a and a dagger a will give you simply a and then the this bath oscillators are independent of the mode uh, cavity mode so therefore this term is not going to contribute and then you will have this particular term from this term you are having um, this term and what else you will be left is the last term because a and a dagger is there so a a dagger is equal to one so you have to exploit a a dagger is equal to one so exploiting that you will have this particular term now that would be minus i integration d omega capital omega of omega b of omega so this is for the uh, this is for the optical mode time derivative of the optical mode operator similarly for the bath mode we can calculate that would be uh, time derivative of b that is 1 by i h cross b of h so here let me show you the calculation this is also easy uh, 1 by i h cross now i have integration because a dagger a this part is not going to contribute because these are independent as i said so we'll have from the next term we'll have say this is d omega dash h cross omega dash b of omega and here i have b dagger of omega dash b of omega dash okay let me show it here so i'm now talking about this particular term okay and then we have h cross d omega dash omega star of omega dash a and we have b of omega b dagger of omega dash so this is uh, what we'll have now and you can okay let us evaluate it you will have minus i from uh, say integration d omega dash omega dash and we now use the commutation relation between this relation we are going to use this one we are going to use if we use it 
then you will have here del delta of delta of omega minus omega this b of omega this and then next term would be d omega this omega star of omega this a delta omega minus omega this then we can utilize the property of the Dirac delta function and this will give us the equation of motion for the bat uh, uh, the mode and that would be b, dega, uh, b dot is equal to minus i omega b of omega minus i omega star of omega into a so this is the equation we get we can write a formal solution to this path equation to do that let us make a change of variables let me take b is equal to b tilde e to the power minus i omega t then i will have b dot is equal to b tilde dot i am taking the time derivative e to the power minus i omega t minus i omega b tilde e to the power minus i omega t then if i put it here in this equation then i will get it as uh, b tilde dot e to the power minus i omega t minus i omega b tilde e to the power minus i omega t and on the right hand side i have minus i omega b tilde e to the power minus i omega t minus i omega star omega a now as you can uh, see from this equation that this particular term and this term get cancelled out and we'll have from here we'll have b tilde dot is equal to minus i omega star of omega a e to the power i omega t okay so now integrating both sides uh, from some initial time t0 so let me integrate it on both sides from some say uh, initial time t0 to some time t and accordingly here also i have minus omega star t0 to t a of t this e to the power i omega t this dt this so if i do the integration this is going to give me b tilde of omega t minus b tilde of omega t0 that would be equal to minus i omega star this will remain the same it would be t0 to t a of t dash e to the power i omega t dash dt dash and from here i can now rewrite actually this in the variable b of omega t so b of omega t is equal to b of omega t0 e to the power minus i omega t minus t0 minus i omega star omega integration t0 to t a of t dash e to the power minus i omega t minus t dash dt dash okay so this is what we get as our formal solution in fact you see here the first term on the right hand side uh, this particular term this term corresponds to the free evolution of the bat while this second term here uh, it represents waves radiated by the cavity into bat so this particular term this second term represents it represents waves waves radiated radiated by the cavity by the cavity into the bat into the bat and on the on the other hand uh, this particular term represents as i said uh, it's free evolution free evolution 
of the bot okay now we can substitute this uh, particular solution this bath solution into um, the equation for the optical mode here so we can put b of omega uh, into this equation so then what we will obtain this let me write that uh, here okay let me first uh, bring this solution to the other set or let me first write it then i will put it so i have to put my bath solution in this equation a dot is equal to minus i omega not a plus omega drive e to the power minus i omega l t and i have here um, minus i integration d omega omega uh, omega here and then this whole thing i have to put so because i have two terms i will get two terms so let me just write it one by one the first term will i will have is this i will have b of omega t0 e to the power minus i omega t minus t0 and the second one is going to give me d omega uh, mod of capital omega of omega whole square integration t0 to t a of t dash e to the power minus i omega t minus t dash dt dash this is coming because you see that this complex conjugate is there here and uh, okay so because of that and in the uh, here we have this omega okay and because in the second term we have that complex conjugate that's why this mod of capital omega of omega square term is coming now assume let us assume that uh, which will justify it later for this particular identification uh, that we are going to make now assume that the coupling the coupling omega omega is the coupling between the bath and the optical mode the coupling omega is uh, constant for all frequencies for all fre bath frequencies for all bath frequencies omega and let us write it as this omega capital omega of omega mod square is equal to kappa by 2 pi where kappa is related to the cavity bandwidth kappa is related to the cavity cavity bandwidth bandwidth so i mean to say the bandwidth would be something like this delta nu is equal to say omega plus minus omega minus divided by 2 pi and omega plus minus plus minus omega minus that is the width is say kappa divided by 2 pi so this is what we have uh, now with this we can write the equation for the optical mode as follows so we'll have a dot t is equal to minus i omega 0 a plus omega drive e to the power minus i omega l t uh, minus i square root of kappa by 2 pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity d omega b of omega okay so b b of omega at t0 e to the power minus i omega t minus t0 minus kappa by 2 pi i am basically replacing omega by square root of kappa by 2 pi and mod omega square capital omega square is equal to kappa by 2 pi so i am rewriting it only nothing new i am doing here t0 to t dt dash a of t dash 
integration minus infinity to plus infinity d omega e to the power minus i omega t minus t this now you may recognize that this particular term is nothing but the dirac delta function so it is 2 pi into it is a delta function delta t minus t this so let us look at this particular term this last term this last term let us look at specifically uh, we have kappa by 2 pi integration t0 to uh, t dt dash a of t dash and here i have 2 pi delta t minus t dash then setting t0 uh, this setting t0 at 0 and this upper limit t at infinity we will have it as kappa 0 to infinity dt dash a of t dash delta t minus t dash but without loss of generality rather than setting t0 at 0 we can set it as minus in minus infinity and then we'll have it as um, because we are setting at minus infinity we have to divide it by half and then we'll have dt dash a of t dash delta t minus t dash this will give me now applying the property of the Dirac delta function i will have it as kappa by 2 a so in the again uh, the last term as you see it's get uh, simplified significantly we are having only this kappa by 2 a for the from the last term on the other hand in the in this third term if we define a parameter say defined as this say a in is equal to i divided by square root of 2 pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity d omega b of omega t0 e to the power minus i omega t minus t0 okay then we can rewrite this equation for time evolution equation for the optical mode in a very simplified form and that would be a dot t is equal to minus i omega 0 a plus omega drive e to the power minus i omega l t now the last term the fourth term here that is kappa by 2 let me put it first here minus kappa by 2 a and the third term will have here root over kappa a in so this is a very important equation that now we have obtained clearly from this equation as you can see that the damping of the optical mode damping of the damping of the optical mode optical mode occurs at the rate occurs at the rate kappa by 2 or in other words the corresponding energy loss occurs at the rate kappa and which is expected behavior of cavity oscillator and this is one of the reason why we have identified uh, this particular term as this all right and this particular term the third uh, last term now here this term is very important and you can recognize that this is nothing but the Langevin noise operator this is Langevin noise operator this is Langevin noise operator since a in has a vanishing mean value we can show that it has a vanishing mean value and the autocorrelation is a delta function so autocorrelation a in of t and a in of t dash would turn out to be a delta function so uh, and you know that this is uh, these are the properties of uh, quantum Langevin noise also and then hence we can identify this last term as the nothing but the Langevin noise so let us actually prove it if we assume that the bath is a thermal state 
then we can write the expectation value of a in is equal to i by square root of 2 pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity d omega the expectation value of this annihilation operator e to the power minus i omega t minus t zero now it is very clear and it's actually obvious that since the annihilation and creation operator have no diagonal elements so this is going to give us simply zero so this expectation value of this langevin noise is zero here we can now calculate the autocorrelation to do that let us work out a in dagger t a in at some different times a t dash let us first calculate it let us put the expression of a in from here so if we put it here i have 1 by 2 pi so there are 2 a in so square root of 2 pi is there for from one term and for another term another square root of 2 pi and in one case we are taking a in dagger so it would be minus i so minus i into i will give us give us plus one so therefore it would be one by two pi and uh, we'll have integration minus infinity to plus infinity d of d omega b dagger omega t zero e to the power i omega t minus t zero and from the other a in uh, we have um, i have to take the expectation below so from the other one i have minus infinity to plus infinity d omega dash b omega dash t zero e to the power minus i omega dash t minus t zero so let me close the bracket and then i have 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity d omega integration minus infinity to plus infinity d omega this expectation value of b dagger omega t0 b of omega this t0 and i have e to the power i omega t minus t0 and here i have e to the power minus i omega this t minus t0 now you see this particular term this is the expectation value of the number operator for phonons um, so this is going to give us uh, it would become phonon number n of omega let us say n of omega this and then this would be uh, delta function delta omega minus omega this so using this we can immediately write here as n of average number of phonons assuming that that the bath occupation number peaks at this cavity frequency omega zero so then i can take this out and i have n bar omega zero divided by 2 pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity uh, b omega e to the power i omega t minus t dash and you know this is nothing but the delta function uh, so along with 1 by 2 pi so this would be n bar of omega 0 delta t minus t dash so in fact uh, what i should have written here uh, earlier as i said ki we are now going to prove it so let me write here it is um, a dagger here and here let me put n bar of omega zero so this is the correct one so as you see the autocorrelation function is a delta function similarly you can show that now 
here we have worked out a dagger a in uh, we can show the other one also that is a in a in dagger at some different time t this this autocorrelation function in the similar way you can work out and you can show that this would be n bar of omega zero assuming that again that the bath occupation number peaks at this cavity frequency then you will have this particular expression delta t minus t days okay now one thing has to be kept in mind that this is a thermal oscillation thermal oscillator so generally these are in microwave frequency and so on but at optical frequency if i talk about at optical frequencies uh, where omega zero is on the order of 10 to the power 15 hertz and uh, if we consider room temperature that is around 300 kelvin in that case this h cross omega zero by kbt is much much less than one that means kbt is much higher than h cross omega zero and this implies that this uh, phonon number or optical photons that would be uh, average number would be nearly zero and in that case at optical frequencies we will have a in uh, dagger t a in t dash this autocorrelation will give us zero on the other hand the other one a in t a in dagger t dash that would be this delta function delta t minus t dash okay this we have done for the uh, in the time domain so we can work out uh, in the frequency domain as well this uh, correlation in the frequency domain and that is that is very straightforward to calculate so i mean to say let us calculate a in of omega and a in dagger of say omega this so this is in the frequency domain so you can calculate first let me do it let me write the Fourier transform of it that is minus infinity to plus infinity dt a in of t e to the power i omega t and here it is minus infinity to plus infinity for the second term for this term i have here say dt dash a in dagger t dash e to the power i omega dash t dash uh, let me close the bracket then i have minus infinity to plus infinity minus infinity to plus infinity dt dt dash the expectation value of a in t a in dagger t dash and i have here e to the power i omega dash t dash plus omega t now I know the result for this one and utilizing that minus into plus infinity minus infinity plus infinity dt dt dash and this guy gives me delta t minus t dash this one and I have e to the power i uh, actually I can write it all right let me do it i omega t minus t dash I can consider it as tau then i will have here e to the power i omega dash t dash and t minus t dash if i replace uh, t by tau plus t dash then i will have a term omega tau plus t dash okay so this is what i will have and using this one i can then next i can write minus infinity to plus infinity dt dash e to the power i omega dash plus omega t dash integration minus infinity plus infinity d tau delta tau e to the power i omega tau okay and then this is the delta function so 
apply the property of the delta function so we will get from here very simply we will have a in omega a in dagger of omega dash that would be equal to 2 pi and this is going to give us 1 okay so i will have this is the dirac delta function again that would be 2 pi delta into uh, delta of omega plus omega dash now in contrast to the bath mode solution we can write another solution in terms of a final time t1 rather than the initial time t0 while we have written this particular solution we went from the initial time t0 to some given time t some instant of time t uh, we can have another solution where we can go from the say final time t1 to this time t that means we are now we can go in the backward direction in time if we do that then we will get a solution of this type that would be b of omega t that would be equal to b of omega t1 e to the power minus i omega t minus t1 here instead of this minus sign and that's going to matter a lot we'll get a plus i omega star of omega integration from t to t1 dt dash a of t dash e to the power minus i omega t minus t dash this can be worked out very easily uh, let me just quickly show you how to do that we can again begin from the change of variable for the bath and if we take the change of variable that is we introduce the uh, this quantity b tilde so b tilde dot is equal to minus i omega star a e to the power i omega t let me quickly uh, take you back to the way we have done it earlier so while we have done it as you see yes this is where our original bat mode equation uh, time evolution equation for the bat mode then going over to this new variable b tilde we got rid of this particular term and uh, we have then this particular equation so here also in the similar way i am starting with uh, uh, this particular equation so integrating both sides uh, integrating integrating both sides from this final time t1 to some time t we can immediately write b tilde omega t minus b tilde omega t1 that would be equal to minus i omega star integration t1 to t dt dash a of t dash e to the power i omega t dash this i can now write as going back to the original variable that is b of omega t e to the power i omega t minus b of omega t1 e to the power plus i omega t1 and this is equal to now let me just reverse the integration so here i now go from t to t1 so i will have a plus i omega star dt dash a of t dash e to the power i omega t dash okay so from here i get b of omega t is equal to b of omega t1 e to the power minus i omega t minus t1 plus i omega star of omega integration t to t1 dt dash a of t dash e to the power minus i omega t minus t dash now we can put this e solution into the equation for the cavity mode 
the equation that we obtain that is a dot is equal to minus i omega 0 a plus omega drive e to the power minus i omega lt minus i integration d omega capital omega of omega b omega t so let me put it uh, put it here this particular solution if i put it here and in the similar fashion we will be able to get the equation time evolution equation for the optical mode in this form and when we go into the backward direction in time now i have a dot is equal to minus i omega 0 a, omega 0 a plus omega drive e to the power minus i omega lt plus now here we have plus kappa by 2 a and minus root over kappa here i will define a new variable a out earlier we had a in so here i am defining a variable a out which is defined as a out is equal to this is also langevin noise it is i by square root of 2 pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity d omega b of omega t1 e to the power minus i omega t minus t1 this one actually represents this represents waves traveling traveling in at traveling out from the cavity traveling out from the from the cavity into the butt into the butt and intuitively you can see that uh, this is uh, this makes really sense because now we are going in the final time to the some uh, instant of time t so therefore we get two uh, equations for the but uh, optical mode when we go in the forward direction in time and thus that equation that we got is this it is a dot is equal to minus i omega 0 a plus omega drive e to the power minus i omega lt minus kappa by 2 a minus square root of kappa a in and another, let me say this is my equation one and uh, another equation i got when i go in the backward in the time direction that is minus i omega zero a plus omega drive e to the power minus i omega lt and i will have here plus kappa by 2 a minus square root of kappa a out so let me term it as equation number two now if we subtract equation uh, two from equation one then we will obtain this this minus kappa a is minus square root of kappa you can easily see this a in plus square root of kappa a out that is equal to zero and from here i get an equation for the output uh, mode of the cavity uh, mode uh, output optical field that is a out is equal to a in plus square root of kappa a this relation is known as the input output relation and it's a very useful relation because if we can solve for the dynamics of the cavity mode a then we can predict the observables in the cavity output in fact we can represent it in by diagram here so we have this fabri pero cavity where one of the mirror is perfectly reflecting and its other mirror is partially uh, transmittive so input is incident here and then output is is the reflected part uh, inside the cavity and if inside the cavity there is a cavity mode is there then this is circulating mode is there and it decays at the rate kappa now if kappa is equal to zero that means cavity decay rate is zero then you immediately see that whatever is getting incident that is going to get reflected on the other hand if kappa is not equal to zero then the as you can see that the 
output is the sum of the incident field reflected uh, at the cavity entrance and the contribution emanating from the cavity mode is given by this part please note that here this cavity mode the a is a function of a in as is evident from this uh, equation here finally let us derive an expression for the drive coupling parameter omega drive which is the uh, amplitude for the laser drive when we are driving the febripero cavity externally we can use input output relation to work out an expression for omega drive to do that let us uh, begin with this uh, equation for the optical mode cavity mode that is a dot is equal to minus i omega 0 a minus kappa by 2 a plus omega drive e to the power minus i omega l t minus square root of kappa a in this equation we can write in a little bit uh, different form let me write it minus i omega 0 a minus kappa by 2 a and let me write square root of kappa a in minus omega drive divided by square root of kappa e to the power minus i omega l t let me define this parameter as the new input noise operator a in tilde and it includes the classical laser drive and with this equation so let me rewrite again we have a dot is equal to minus i omega 0 a minus kappa by 2 a minus square root of kappa a tilde in now if i go over to the frequency domain that means if i take the fourier transformation immediately i can get this equation minus i omega a of omega these are all operators let me write uh, don't write the op uh, op head term all the time so you understand that these are anyway quantum operators we have minus i omega 0 a of omega minus kappa by 2 of a of omega minus square root of kappa a tilde e of omega from here you can immediately get the expression for a omega that would be square root of kappa a tilde e of omega i omega minus omega 0 minus kappa by 2 so if we now rewrite this input output relation let me rewrite input output relation for the new variable we have this input output relation a out is equal to a in plus square root of kappa a this we can write for our new variable says a tilde out is equal to a tilde in plus square root of kappa a and where uh, this a out is defined in a similar way that of a tilde in and a tilde out is equal to a out minus omega drive divided by square root of kappa e to the power minus i omega l t if i take the fourier transform of this relation so i will get it in the frequency domain as a tilde out omega is equal to a tilde in omega plus square root of kappa a of omega now we know the expression for a of omega uh, from uh, here and if i put it uh, in this expression so i will be able to write a tilde out of omega is equal to a tilde in of omega into 1 plus kappa divided by i omega minus omega 0 mi minus kappa by 2 let me evaluate uh, this uh, a tilde out at the laser frequency omega l and a tilde at omega l would be equal to a tilde in evaluated at omega l 1 plus kappa divided by i omega l minus omega 0 let me define it as the detuning parameter i delta 
minus kappa by 2 where i have defined the detuning parameter as omega l minus omega 0 and again what i can do in we can write this a tilde uh, in omega l in terms of a of omega because we have this expression from here i can write it in terms of a of omega and if i put it there so i will get so this is a tilde out i will get an expression for a tilde out it's very simple to uh, work it out just a few step and if you do it you will get it as a of omega l divided by square root of kappa i delta plus kappa by 2 okay so this expression now we are going to utilize because this allows us to express the conservation of energy by equating the input power to the outgoing power so input power p in has to be equal to the outgoing power that is equal to h cross omega l a dagger out plus a out and evaluated of course at the frequency of the laser that is omega l both these quantities a dagger as well as uh, a it is evaluated at omega l and because we have this expression for a tilde out so from here i have h cross omega l you can see that i will get del square plus kappa square by 4 and we'll have a dagger evaluated at omega l a of omega l this is what i get now to go further let me first do one thing let me take the equation for the cavity mode once again so i have a dot a dot is equal to minus i omega zero a uh, plus omega drive e to the power minus i omega lt minus kappa by 2a minus square root of kappa a in uh, to get rid of this parameter uh, explicit time dependence so i apply the usual trick i go to the change of variable a i take it as i take a is equal to a tilde e to the power minus i omega lt and a in i take it as a in tilde e to the power minus i omega lt so if i do that i will be able to get an equation for a in terms of a tilde so a tilde dot is equal to i delta a tilde plus omega drive minus kappa by 2 a tilde minus square root of kappa a tilde in and from here in the steady state i can get the steady state value of a tilde in the steady state i will have a tilde average value of a tilde would be equal to minus omega drive divided by i delta minus kappa by 2 and therefore as you can see if i take the mod square of a tilde square that is exactly equal to a mod of average of a square and that is equal to omega drive mod square divided by delta square plus kappa square by 4 so therefore what we have here is this that a dagger of omega l a of omega l is equal to uh, average of this quantity and this is equal to simply the one that uh, let me again write here it is this so this is what i have so therefore we'll obtain p in is equal to h cross omega l okay let me show you the expression here once again so we have this we now got this expression so it would be h cross omega l divided by kappa 
omega drive mod square because this particular term is getting cancelled uh, because of this term and we have this expression for input power and from here we can write an expression for the drive amplitude laser drive amplitude that would be mod of omega drive is equal to square root of kappa p in divided by h cross omega l this is an expression which is worth remembering and it will be useful for our discussion on kvt optomechanics in the next class let me stop here for today in this lecture we discussed how quantum langevin noise affects the optical mode of a fabric pyro cavity this led us to the discussion of input output relation we applied this input output relation to derive an approximate expression for the laser drive amplitude so we are now well equipped with all the tools to discuss quantum cavity optomechanics in the next class so see you in the next class thank you